Hey everyone, I'm Mark, and today we're going to explore what slew mode is, look at the different situations that you might consider using it, and most importantly, learn how to operate it. Put simply, slew mode allows you to move your aircraft freely in any direction, unrestricted by the laws of physics, so you can put the plane in any orientation, altitude, or position that you want to put it in, and then continue your flight from there. When you're in slew mode, all the flight controls and even the engines stop responding to your inputs. And one way to think of it is that it's like if you were holding a small model plane in your hands and you can move it wherever and however you want. It's available for all default and add-on planes, but it can't be used in career mode, I guess because it would be considered cheating. But as we're going to see, it's not just a gimmicky feature. There are some valid use cases for it in free flight. Probably the thing I use it for the most is when I run into scenery problems, which could be anything from elevation issues on the taxiway that cause you to get stuck to bridges that aren't functional that you can fall through with your plane if you aren't careful. It's also useful if you want to start your flight somewhere other than the preset options that are available on the world map, especially for smaller fields like the ones that don't have any available ramps at all. In that case, your only choice is to start from the runway, but what you can do is as soon as you've loaded in, move yourself to somewhere more appropriate to do your pre-flight, and then once you've exited slew mode, you can get the engine running, set up your flight plan, and then taxi back to the runway like normal. Slew mode's also helpful if you're doing a group flight, since there can often be a limited number of ramp spots available. So if you load in and you're on top of someone else's plane, it gives you the flexibility to move yourself to another location that you can't easily access otherwise. Pushback is another situation where slew mode can be your friend, since there are a lot of airports that don't have pushback services, and some spots can be tricky to taxi from, especially if you're surrounded by buildings or other planes. The last usage for it is if you've disabled crash damage, slew mode can be a way to get yourself back on track if you crash since you'll be able to recover and put yourself back in the air, although it's probably safer to just put yourself somewhere on the ground instead, at least with a small plane, and then take off again. Slew mode gives you that flexibility to reposition yourself, but it's important to know that it's not ideal for skipping forward during a flight since you can't access the cockpit and therefore you won't see your nav display and you could very easily end up off track. If that's what you're trying to do, you'll be better off using the sim rate option instead, which allows you to fast forward through longer flights, but we won't be looking at how to use that here. Alright, so now that you have an idea when and what slew mode can be useful for, let's have a look at how to actually use it. So we can enable it with the default binding, which is now Shift Z in Flight Sim 2024. And if you already have an Xbox controller, it's definitely one of the best ways to do it. The reason for that is that the default bindings use the two analog sticks to move the plane in every direction with the triggers to control the altitude, so it gives you a smoother and more organic way to move the plane around. The downside is that it's one more thing that you need to keep around, and if you've already got a lot of hardware, it adds to the pile and it makes things a lot messier than I like to keep them, especially since you won't use slew mode that frequently either. It's mostly for that reason that I use the keyboard for it instead, and I've actually remapped a few of the key bindings so that it's a bit easier to use than the defaults. So what we'll do is run through that as we look at how to move the plane. I remapped the Y key to enable slew mode, which is what it was for as long as I can remember, at least as far back as FSX. And just like before, when you press that key, the camera angle will change so that you're right behind the plane and it kind of looks like it's been paused. In walk-around mode, you typically use the WASD keys to move around, and I found that remapping the slew translate keys to use them as well makes it easy to remember since it's going to be the same button presses for both actions. That causes duplicate bindings for those keys, but it's not really an issue because you can't get into slew mode while you're in walk-around mode anyways, and only one set of bindings will work at a given time regardless. On top of the basic move keys, E and Q are what I use to control the height at which to put the plane, even though in practice I very rarely use these since I mostly use slew mode while I'm still on the ground. If you're moving the plane across uneven ground, it is worth pressing the translate down key a few times to make sure that you're on the ground before you exit slew mode because falling even from a few feet could damage your plane. 
The I, J, K, and L keys on the other side of the keyboard come in to control the yaw and the pitch of the plane, so it gives you that flexibility to move it first wherever you want with W, A, S, D, and then rotate it however you like with I, J, K, and L. The only thing to be careful of is if you do remap the bindings like I've suggested is to make sure to use the slow bindings where they're available because the fast bindings make it a lot more difficult to control the precision of where you move the plane. Once you're in position though, regardless of what you wanted to do with it, you can disable slow mode by pressing the Y key again and you'll be put back in the normal world in the view that you were in when you went into slow mode. That's all there is to it, and if you learned something useful today, make sure to like the video and subscribe on your way out for more content like this one.